Now we're on to our next part of this great discussion with our esteemed guest, David Harrington. We're talking now about what makes a great PM. You can look at this in two ways. What makes a great PM and what makes a PM truly valued by the customer? That's true. That's true. And I can tell you, Phil, that every once in a while, PMs in the organizations that I've been associated with or parts of organizations kind of get a, a bad, can get a bad name. Mm -hmm. And part of that, I believe, is because they're not creating value. Absolutely. You know what? One organization I worked in, I heard, Phil, you're valueless. Why are you here? You know, we can manage our projects ourselves. Mm -hmm. What do you think of such a statement? I've heard it before. And uh, I think it stems back to the, you have to understand the business. You need to have business acumen. You need to take the tools mm -hmm. that PMI and the project management, you know, science part of it takes and gives you. And how do you successfully transfer that mm -hmm. into a successful project that has business value? Mm -hmm. And you do that a number of different ways. Um, but I think it, you, get, you should get to a point where you know you're successful when that business client continually comes to you and say, I need you to help run this project. Or even more so, which I happen to have happen, is sometimes a project really isn't maybe a purely, is it any technology? Mm. It does not have any technology. But it has complexity. It has risk. Mm. It has financial impact. has process. And they'll still say, because of the complexity and the risk, I need a project manager to lead this, to get the right people working the right way, eliminate barriers, and successfully deliver a project mm. that I know your team can articulate. And sometimes I think people hide behind um, a tool. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the foundation. It's, it's, and I think that one of the things that I tell uh, PMs is that you have to have basically no fear. Now, I understand there's risk mitigation. We're always, as project managers, managing risk because that's part of one of the fundamental blocks is managing risk. But you have to have a little bit of no fear when you're leading a team. You're working with the customers. You're, they res the customers will appreciate you pushing back and said, you know, that's great, but I don't think we have the plan baked yet ready to launch. Or I think we really do need to have a kickoff meeting and mm -hmm. get everybody on the same page. You know, or we do need to do a full process improvement uh, exercise for three or four days to understand what the current state is and what the future state is before we kick off the, the requirements, before we start moving down the path of adding um, a building on a technology application, let's mm -hmm. say. So I think you have to have a little bit of, of the no fear factor. And that's what separates sometimes some of your more senior valued project managers because mm -hmm. the customer realizes that, A, you're bringing value, yeah. you're going to speak your mind, you're going to add things that I haven't thought about, mm -hmm. and that creates a lot of value. They're not coming to say, geez, you really manage these tasks, mm -hmm. and you check the, the task, check the box off for the task, and I feel really good about it. <laughs> That's just expected. Yes. That's absolutely. just expected. Yeah, yeah you got you to do that, <laughs> but it's just expected. And then, you know, there's this saying, what, what is fair, you know? Just give me an idea, based on some of the PMs you've worked with or maybe you've observed, what are those fear elements that are more like false evidence appearing real, to give fear an acronym? Well, I think one of the things that about fear creates an idea that it's, mm. it's not my job and I keep a very narrow focus. Mm. And to me, when you run a complex project, you not only think about your project in terms of the core, but you're also going to think about upstream impacts, mm -hmm. downstream impacts, because mm -hmm. a lot of times you can put together something really great, yeah. but if that, that handoff to wherever you're handing off isn't ready, isn't, isn't mm -hmm. set up to take it, it, still, it may fail. The customer may stay at the end of the day, geez, it failed. Mm -hmm. Why didn't it work better than it did? Mm -hmm. I, think, I, you know, I think the other factor is transparency. You know, one of the things you have is, as any leader, including project management, is integrity. Mm -hmm. And and I think you have to be very upfront so people know that, you know, I have a saying, it's easy to remember the truth. And and it's just something that you want to make sure that you're <laughs> fair. And one of the things that happens a lot of times is that people feel conflict is a bad word. Mm -hmm. It's not. Based on your experiences, 
that you and I have and look and where we, you know how we grew up and our different experiences and the, and we're going to see things differently mm. and that's true in any organization working with a group of people you know and working through those and addressing those up front is critical to, to project management and how a project manager brings groups together to work through those differences is key mm. conflicts going to exist it's how you work through that conflict in a more of a very um, successful uh, way of doing and addressing those issues, and then you then you get to a consensus so you can move forward and eliminate that barrier. Mm. You've brought up some very good points. I mean, people are often scared of conflict, so they don't want to rock the boat. But how does your team, or how would you mentor, or coach a junior PM coming off? The, the PMP ship and jumping into, I don't know, one of the biggest projects they've ever managed. How you coach them to manage conflict? Well, I think, great question, Phil. I think the first thing is you as a leader, you as a manager, have to be real in terms of allowing conflict or disagreement come within your team. Mm. I always kind of look at, you know, I have a lot of good ideas, but I don't own all the ideas, and I always encourage people to come up with a disagreement or another mm. way of doing it. And the first words out of my mouth usually if there's a disagreement is, thank you. <laughs> and then we go from there. Mm. doesn't mean that I don't hold as a manager 51% of the vote. Mm. But I'm not the smartest person. That I want to push that decision making to the lowest the people doing the work. So the mm. project managers, I want them to own their projects. One of the first things I tell a young PM, you own your project. I will help you. I will support you. But you own your project. And you have to feel like you own your project. And you have to, you know, and it's much easier to sometimes push back a little bit mm -hmm. than it is to pull somebody up. But you have to start by demonstrating that behavior, that you have an open culture, that people have different ideas, mm -hmm. because people will model after that. That's true, yeah. That's number one. And then I try to associate with some junior PMs, with some more senior PMs that I think have the traits that, you know, I like to have in my team. And I think that also rubs off. Courage, mentoring um, is a big part of that. I also um, also would say that the challenge piece is that sometimes um, after we get in listening to a call, I don't want to try to ever correct somebody mm. during that call. Okay. But afterwards, I'll sit down with my one-on-ones because I have weekly one-on-ones, and Fantastic. I'll say, how would you feel about that dialogue? <laughs> what could we have done different? Mm. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and we will work through that as a coaching. And, we, and I look for improvement. Mm. Everybody's on a continuum. Yes. You're working toward that improvement. But it starts with you setting the right kind of atmosphere and then giving people a chance to model their behavior, not only after you as a manager, but also other key PMs that you value in your organization. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for that. So speaking about these one-on-ones, great forums for discussion and so on. But um, one of the things that people do not do, you know, is underscore the importance of clear and understandable goals. And actually, that's what we're going to be talking about next. We're going to go into the importance of clear and understandable goals. And we're going to try to paint a picture of what success looks like because it could be perceptual to the stakeholder, your failure. To the project manager, I've hit a home run. Mm -hmm. So we need to really clarify. How do, we, how do we paint this picture of what success looks like and how do we clarify goals? So we'll talk about that when we come back.